everybody and welcome back to the last installment on the setup series for the AR7200 or Beast X platform and um, just a quick recap as always at this point you guys should have successfully gotten all your main uh, main rotor setup, swash plate level, blade pitch at the positive and negative uh, nagel positive and negative negative ang angles there you go negative angles my bad I can't talk today um, that you guys desired all your swash plate correction directions and everything should be complete uh, servo limits everything so forth and so on that we've went up to so we jumped a couple of steps as we progressed through this um, to save the tail rotor for later and also what's known as the parameter menus and those are going to be the behavioral controls so all we're going to do is we're going to touch on those so we're going to get the tail fully set up and we'll go ahead and we'll do a quick walkthrough on the parameter controls and then we can take this bad boy out and do a test flight and start just kind of tuning the system and and, and we'll talk more about these dials um, obviously that are on the system we'll talk more about those when you do your initial test flights and everything so we're going to be doing the tail rotor first now we're going to be using the menu setup selections that we've been using so we're going to bypass the initial one and, and wait for that um, flashing light to release and we're going to be using menus C, D, E, and F to complete the tail setup very very simple at this point in time here's where you guys should be you'll see that of course I've got my servo, ohm, uh, servo arm on and I've gone, I've gone ahead and, and created my linkage rod um, I also have the tail blades installed so get yourself to this point. Again, I stress to you guys, make sure if your motor is connected in any way, shape, or form that you have zero throttle curves in here so you don't risk any spool-ups. Um, I always just like to reiterate that. Now, what I will have you do at this time, though, go ahead and get your servo horn created. Put your ball on with the spacing that's required per the manual. Um, get your linkage rod made up. Do not put your servo horn on the servo at this time because we need to center out the servo before we know if it's going to be at 90 degrees, okay? So have everything loose fit there. And then step one, what you're going to want to do is jump into your radio. Let's see if we can get this for you here. And um, just to reiterate, guys, my throttle curve selections are all at zero, okay? Make sure you're staying safe while doing this. Um, on my particular radio, I'm using Spectrum, so it has a menu labeled Gyro. Um, things like Futaba and, and Orange and V-Bar and all that other stuff, um, I'm not sure how those are listed, but at this point in time, you'd want to go into the radio's Gyro menu. Usually, it has it disabled, and what you want to do is make sure the channel selection is set to gear, and also... Uh, some people like to, to assign their, 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 their gain values to a switch, which you can. In my case, I'm going to assign it to uh, my flight mode switch. So uh, in each RPM mode, whether it be uh, you know normal, stunt one, stunt two, or even throttle hold, I can set a different gain value if I need to. So you know higher head speeds, lower head speeds, um, different flight characteristics. So... What you're going to want to do is go in and activate the menu, choose your switch selection accordingly. And also, okay, so the way the Beast X is going to read gain, um, from 0 to negative 100 is going to be our rate mode. In rate mode, of course, the servo will center after each command. This is the mode we need to be in in order to find that sweet spot or the 90 degree angle on our tail servo because the gyros are inhibited in this menu. So, set your first selection to a negative value. I always start at 32 for my test flights. And don't worry, we're going to change this number, but just for setup purposes, go into negative 32 on, on the selection. And then since I'm using my flight mode, if you're using a three-position toggle switch, you can do the same accordingly, but I just went ahead and set my other modes here for a positive 32. And let me demonstrate for you on the system here what that represents so we have right now we could fly the machine right we're, we're in flight mode you'll notice that I've got a purple or that or that violet status uh, LED that signifies rate mode now if I go into I'm just gonna hit throttle hold to be safe but if I go into throttle hold it's gonna switch to blue 
and you'll see that, that it, it signifies a gain amount on my uh, letter chart there. So right now I'm in heading hold mode, but if I go back to my negative 32, I'm now in rate mode, okay? So this has to be done at this point in time in order for us to progress with the programming, and a lot of people fall short on this part and have all kinds of tail issues. So make sure that this portion is done, and we can go ahead and continue on with the programming. Alrighty guys, now that the initial base programming of the radio is done and we've got the basics of the mechanics ready to go, again, my tail servo horn should not be connected yet, of course mine is, um, and I've got everything else set up down the length of the boom, got the blades on and everything else. So, we're going to jump into our programming here, um, our setup menus, and we're going to go into menu C to start our, our overall setup, okay? So, same thing guys, we're going to hold this down. Wait for it to go solid, let go, now we're in A, we're going to go B and C. Now per our menus here in C, this is our tail servo, it's the center position pulse length. Uh, with my servo, we already went over this, I should be at that blue solid. Set this accordingly, double check it, let's jump over to menu D, tail servo frequency. If you checked your chart, um, like we went over in previous videos, this should be set. Mine should be blue flashing, so it's that simple. Now, as we get into the next menu here, uh, well, actually, you know what? In this menu here, menu D, this is actually really important. So notice we're on D. This menu doesn't have a timeout, which means it's not going to exit. And also, if we're in our rate mode, as we set up our radio, our gyros aren't going to be active. So menu D in the um, setup menu selection is going to be where we want to go ahead and install our servo horn. And again, this menu is not going to exit on you automatically. So it'll stay like this until you exit by pushing the button or powering down. So at this point in time, and try to leave the, the helicopter stationary, you know, try not to really bobble it around too much. But if we were in rate mode previously, the tail servo should center no matter what. But I have seen sometimes maybe it goes a little, a little skillwampus. So, I've got the heli stationary on the bench. What I would now do at this point is I'd find the proper servo horn for my servo. And I would try to, what you want to do is you want to position it in every way possible to get the closest 90 degree um, per, your, per, your, per your make and model. So, depending on which orientation your servo's at, again, read your manual specifically for that. Um, but a lot of the times, like Align servos, they come with the star wheels, so you can actually position four different ways and each time those teeth are going to bite differently. Same with most other servos that have servo horns that have star wheels. If you just have just a normal wheel uh, or a normal arm one, just get that bad boy on there as close to 90 as you can because I don't add any electronical sub trims to my tail rotor. That may seem odd, but with the B system, you want straight mechanical 90 and let the, the fly barless unit control the rest as far as doing the gyro compensation. Uh, when you start playing around with sub trims and things like that, it tricks the system and it causes issues. So, step one, uh, make sure you're in menu D. Try not to disturb the machine and get your servo horns on as close to 90 degrees as humanly possible. Okay. Once we have achieved that, um, I usually don't put the screw in yet because we may have to pop this off to adjust the ball link um, or you can fasten this down and snap your link off, whichever you prefer to do. Um, but the next step is going to be centering the tail rotor. So, 90 degrees here, we're still in menu D and you'll notice that it has not auto exited yet. So we're still hanging out in there. Um, be very careful too, just on the radio, you should have it set off to the side. If you disturb the rudder stick left or right, you're going to change your setting as well. So make sure before we exit this that we have the desired setting. Mine should remain blue flashing. Now, next part. What we're going to do is once you have your servo horn on and you have your tail linkage rod made up to the desired length, you might have to tweak it a little bit. But what I do is I go ahead and I install my, my main rotor, or I'm sorry, my tail rotor blades on. And what we're shooting for is we want to try to get these um, per the manufacturer specification, of course, um, or I always just shoot for a dead zero. Now, one thing to look at is um, if you have to take the, the tail linkage rod off, 
you can either lengthen or shorten from either end to get your, your shaft where you need it to be. And I always just try to make sure that it's a dead center of travel. You know, equal gap on both sides. Or what you can do is, again, is you can collapse your tail blades. And it's kind of hard to see it on camera because the angling is hard. But if, you, if I collapse my tail blades towards each other, you can see that they line up perfectly with each other, right? There's no, I can try to flex them a little, but there's no pitch, right? That's a good way to indicate if you have it right or wrong. So I always shoot for that dead center, zero degree of pitch, okay? So that's step number two. Make sure that your um, your tail blade linkages and your grip arms and everything in here is all neutral. So we want no, no angles on the blade, zero degrees, okay? This part can take you a couple of tries. Um, it's very finicky. Just always keep coming back here to your reference position. Make sure you're sitting at that 90 degrees. Um, adjust your linkage as evenly as possible from both ends too. That way when we're getting torque and pulling on the rod, we don't risk having a slip out or anything like that. So get this stage done, okay? Now that everything is set center and set neutral, the next step is going to be menu E, which is our uh, tail servo endpoints. Now, this is always kind of a fun one for me because um, I've had a lot of um, different feedback on this. And once we exit our programming and our gyro remains in rate mode, which we have it set up for with the negative 32 value, our tail is going to behave, in some cases, a little different than we're expecting because the gyros aren't active. Okay, so take in mind that as we proceed forward. So I've got um, my, my neutral setup and everything here on the tail. So once that's done, I'm actually just going to go ahead and expand out my blades. It makes life a little easier like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to click into the next menu. This one is timed, so you don't necessarily have all day to do it. But we're going to do the tail rotor endpoints. And it's going to be as simple as uh, going into our next menu. And, um, oh, one last thing to check, too, is in our next menu, um, actually, we'll go over that here in just a moment, then. Um, we're going to be using our rudder stick and going left, full travel, and stopping. Once we stop, the Beast X will flash to save. Then we move to the right, stop, it'll flash to save. So I'm going to do an up here demonstration for you guys real quick, and then we'll actually move over to the, to the, to the full rudder. So, so if I go into the next menu here, which will be menu E, Okay, that's going to save. Now, if I just move my rudder stick a little bit, you'll notice that it starts to flash in one direction. Let's see. And then it'll save my settings. See the blue flashing light? Now, if I go this way, it say it, it goes so, so purple is to the left. And even if I make a small adjustment, look at this, just a small nudge and let go. It's going to save in your settings, okay? So you want to make sure that you go from one side to the other side um, as you do this. And it'll go ahead and set in your tail servo endpoints, right? So you can see how I'm moving it. And each time it's going to flash, okay? So let me come down here to the actual tail and, and let you know. So what I shoot for... Oh, and take in mind as well, guys, if your servo, if your tail servo is not moving in the right orientation at this point, just jump into your transmitter and go into your reversing feature and just reverse the servo. That'll change direction. Um, if you have a clockwise main rotor and a counterclockwise tail rotor and your tail is on this side, it's pretty easy. Left rudder means uh, right slider because we fly the nose of the machine. So if I give left rudder, we get left nose, right? So we want tail going to the right. Easiest way to remember it is left rudder, right slider. Right rudder, left slider, okay? So anyways, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna jump in here, and I've got my rudder right here, is I'm just gonna get it to right where it connects onto the, to the hub. Nudge it on over there. Boom, right there. And I'll wait for the Beast X to save, it flashed. Now I'm going to go right rudder, get it right there, and it flashed, okay? 
So, now everything's good on that, so we can go ahead and exit. Now, if you guys have been following along throughout this entire series, this next part, at least in my opinion, is important. It may be overkill, but I don't feel as though it is. Um, the next step, of course, is going to be um, menu F, right? Your tell sensory direction. Right now, we're in rate mode, so we don't necessarily know. I know you can pick up the helicopter and move it, and it should react accordingly, but... I'm going to put us into heading hold mode first. So let's exit programming real fast. Um, but here's what I was talking about. Once you get to menu G, which was your swashplate centering, you want to remember what we talked about. Select one of your three servos. I always do the last one. One, two, three. Then exit programming. Just to make sure nothing was disturbed. Okay, so uh, G, H, I, J, A, da, da, da. And we're out. Okay. So, a little bit of damage control here. Let's make sure everything is looking right. You can see that my servo recentered. And I'm in rate mode. And I'm giving my full control, but look at when I let go. Right? It always returns to center. A lot of people get confused over this because it's supposed to stay over to one side. Or maybe even just back off a little. But no matter what, it's going to return to center. So now, all we do... We just jump right back into here. Go gyro. And I'm just going to take this negative and turn it into a positive. Now as long as we're comfortable and we know that our mechanical neutral is set up. So 90 on the servo, linkage rod is adjusted and our tail slider is in the center. Now no matter what flight mode we're in, whether it be normal throttle hold, idle up one, idle up two. We have active stable gyros, and right now they have a set gain value of 32%, which when we go out and fly, we will increase or decrease said values based on our tail's behavior. So if it wants to shake or um, not hold appropriately, right? So um, now the beast deck should have a solid blue light. Let's go ahead and exit out of here. And let's check our tail behavior now. So if I move my stick now, it doesn't return to center, right? It's getting its full travel and everything, but you notice how it gets to the end and backs off normal behavior. Again, we're not actually getting any um, counterbalancing right now because the machine is stationary. It's not moving. If the heli was up in the air and the tail rotor was spinning, this will behave completely different. But this is what you want to see. Stays to one side. If I go left, it goes right, so forth and so on. Now, the last thing you want to check on the tail, and this is going to be kind of hard for me to do because of how big this machine is, but I'm just going to try to explain it the best way I can. Um, gyros are active. If I give left rudder and my slider on this machine goes to the right, okay, left rudder equals uh, right slider, what I should see happen is if I pick up the helicopter right now and I start to, let's actually see if I can try to do it here. If I rotate, so if I give left rudder, right, I'm flying the nose, so I'm going left like this. So if I pick up the tail and move it in the right direction, this slider should automatically start moving itself back. Here we go, ready? Let's see how it's moving. Now if I try to move back, the slider's going to, it's moving itself, guys. I ain't touching the transmitter. So it's the same as your swash plate, so to speak, right? So it's going to counterbalance every movement. Now, if that setting is wrong for any reason, all you're going to do is jump back into programming, go into menu F, the tail sensor direction, simply reverse it, exit back out, make sure gyros are active, and then just check that same thing, left rudder, Gives me right slider. If I pick up the machine and give it um, the right input, it should be counterbalancing, and it is. Okay. So I know my gyro and everything is set up and complete. Now that the tail is done, let's move on to the parameter menus. Alrighty, guys. So as we arrive at the final portion of the video, it's going to be the parameter setup, and this one we're going to go through on the screen. But I just wanted to show you real quick to make sure everyone understands how to enter the parameter setup. Once we push down the set button, we're literally going to release it as soon as we see light. 
okay? Usually we bypass it, right, and wait for it to turn solid and then let go. So to get into parameter, let go, right there. Now you'll notice in the setup menus when we bypass it, everything stays solid. This will flash with each setting. That way you can ensure yourself that you are in the parameter setup menus. Once you exit, you get your song and dance and everything's good to go. So let's jump over to the screen real quick. I just want to go over the parameter features with you real quick. That way, uh, you know, you understand what you're selecting and why. After that, the Beast X or, or AR7200 BX platform, if you will, will be completed and it is ready for its initial test flight, you guys. So this is my Spectre 700. Uh, it's going to be rocking the AR7200 BS, uh, BX system, obviously. So let's finish up the parameter settings and let's go out and let's fly. Okay, you guys, jumping over to the screen here, you can see we've got our list of the parameter menu setups, which again will be the um, correct status LED, okay? Now with this, what we're going to be doing, jump up here, okay, so we're in the right spot here. So it does specify here the status uh, menu LED will be flashing quickly, that's when we'll go ahead and release, set here. And as we go through, or as you go through the settings, this part doesn't really need a live demonstration. I just wanted to kind of talk to them, uh, kind of go through them with you real quick. Now, some of the newer versions and older versions of the BSTEC system, the AR7200 uh, and so forth, have somewhat of different options in here. So if I read off one that you have or don't have, don't panic. You can just read through the manual for it. But... Um, Menu A is the swash plate. It's a cyclic center adjustment. Um, let's say you're having some drifting issues. Don't go in and start clicking sub trims. What you can do if your CG is off or you're getting any unwanted left, right, forward, backwards drift, um, after you've done your gain settings, you can always come in here and it'll let you move the aileron and elevators kind of to, to offset that and then you can just reset it with the rudder stick. I've never had to use this. If you use the proper setup that we just went over, this should not be an issue. Just make sure your battery packs and CG are set correctly. Uh, moving on, number B, control behavior. Now this one's a biggie. Um, anything that's user defined, what that's gonna do is it's gonna default to your radio's values. I'm going to uh, um, recommend avoiding these, but if you know enough about it, feel free to do so. Um, your default is sport. Now, control behavior, basically what this is going to do is it's going to, well, it's going to control the behavior of the mixing of all the servos, um, how fast they counterbalance, how fast they move, um, the speed at which it gets from A to B, you know, just overall things like that. So, you can try starting off on sport and just see how it flips and rolls or how it banks turns. If you need a little bit more, you know, oomph behind it, you can come in and bump this up. I have mine on blue flashing because I like my helicopter to um, respond accordingly. Okay. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I lied. I'm sorry. The blue solid is for transmitter. I apologize. But um, so, yeah, pick yours accordingly. If, if you don't know, start low and work your way up. That's the nice thing about this is at the field. You can enter right into this menu, bump it up one, spool up, give it a fly, land it, try different settings. So um, a lot of these other ones here I kept stock. Um, swash plate pitching up behavior. Um, it's on medium as per the default red solid, which is exactly where I left mine. Um, oh, whoops, 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 right here. Um, I don't know. This one, you know, if you're doing fast forward flight and the helicopter wants to kind of porpoise where it's pitching up on you or pitching down suddenly, Sometimes the gain can unlock and it becomes a little bit hard to handle based on, you know, the, the inertia and everything you're putting on the rotor and the disc load and everything. So you could increase or decrease this if need be. I have never changed it and I've put a B-Stex on everything from a, from a 250 all the way up to an 800. So I'm going to leave that at medium. Heading lock gain. This one I have changed one time and it's because I used a 760 um, servo instead of the 1520 and I did have to bump it up a little. But let's say we go out to fly the helicopter and, you know, we should end up anywhere between 32% gain in our radio, uh, maybe as high as like, like 38, you know, 38.5, anything above that might be pushing it. 
Um, but if you find yourself up really high on gain values, let's say 40, 50 percent, the tail still ain't locking. Come into your parameter menus, menu D, and you can actually increase the the gyro's output on how it holds or reads the gain. But again, I've 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 rarely ever had to use it, so I'm gonna leave it at medium. Do my test flights and get my readout from there. Stick dead band, obviously menu E. This will be the position around your center of sticks that have no command. Um, I've never messed with this at all. It's it's almost like Expo from what I understand. But also control behavior gives you that exponential feel. So stick dead band, I'm going to always leave it the factory default red. Flashing, I have never changed it. Um, torque pre-comp, we're going to want to go ahead and turn this off always with helicopter platforms. If you're using this on anything else, I really can't tell you what this would be used for. Um, I understand that it, that it, that it has a pre-compensation for the, the torque of the main rotor, yes, but that's what our gyros are for. So I'm going to leave this off, which will be purple. And the last two are probably the ones I use the most. So G, cyclic response. Um, I'm going to recommend you start at about a red flashing to red solid because purple just feels really dull. Um, of course, I'm going to put mine all the way up on blue solid, or blue, blah, blue solid, my bad, very high, because I really like to have those sticks sensitive. Pitch boost um, is a little bit different. So the, the, the default on it is going to be purple, which is off. And I recommend trying your machine with it off, because take in mind a lot of the machines nowadays, mine, for example, it has a governor feature and um, based on my Hobbywing ESC, when it when it notices a drop in RPMs, it's going to increase in RPMs, right, to keep me at it once at, um, well, RPM, right? Well, if my pitch does the same thing, I might be getting some less than desirable results or some odd readouts in my, in my behaviors. So what I would do is take this off, try flying the heli, give it some really hard pitch maneuvers like TikToks and everything and see how the governor works. Get your governor gains where they need to be. And then if you still feel like there are times where you're bogging down or you're overloading the main rotor, but you don't want to increase temp and stuff on the, on the, on the ESC and the motor, um, from what I understand with the pitch boost feature, uh, features, it's going to help with that. But do it one step at a time. Don't go from off to high or from low to very high. Just put it on low. Go out and fly it. See how it does. If you need more, put it on a medium. I always... Um, since I know my machine well enough, I put mine on low, red flashing, and I never have any issues. My heli flies like it's a feather. So after you exit out of this one, guys, it's going to do its three jumps. And we have now successfully went through the entire AR7200 BX setup uh, or the Beast X platform. Went through all the setup menus. Hopefully you guys watched the first three series of the video. And then this one finishes you up with the parameter menus. Now... This is the menus you'll use when you're out at the field if you need to tweak and make some some um, some sensitivity adjustments and whatnot. And in, um, I'll leave a link at the end of this video, guys, for the at the field tuning, um, which I've already pre-recorded. So go ahead and check that out. Other than that, guys, I hope you go out and have a very successful flight. Thank you so much for following me with this series, um, and of course supporting my YouTube channel. And remember, my friends, if Freddie can fly, so can you. Fly safe, everybody.